So welcome everyone to our Microsoft Teams and OneNote with Canvas webinar. Uh, we've got the wonderful uh, presence of Rachel Hughes from Trinity Grammar with us today and Paul Harmon from Barker College. Uh, and they've been using Microsoft Teams, then uh, yeah, Microsoft Teams with Canvas and also OneNote at their schools. Uh, but they do it in a slightly different way because they have things set up a little bit differently at each of their schools. So it's really great to have different perspectives about how they're doing things and uh, why they're doing it the way that they're doing it. So hopefully we can get a lot of um, value. I know you will get a lot of value out of what they have to say today. Um, and uh, I'll, uh, the agenda is pretty simple because I get to hand over to Paul and Rachel and what I'll do, it, feel free to Chuck any questions that you might have in the chat there, and uh, I'll try and keep up with what's going on there in the chat. And uh, I might, you know, pause Paul and Rachel as we're going through at, at certain points, if appropriate, um, or we might just wait until there's a, a nice point where we can stop and address any questions that you might have at that point in time. So feel free to jump in the chat and say hello and. Uh, ask any questions or leave any comments that you think might be useful for everyone. Uh, in the meantime, I'll hand over to Rachel and Paul. Uh, who'd like to go first? Put your hand up. All right, Rachel. <laughs> first in best stress. Uh, you should be able to unmute. I've made you a co-host, so um, go for it. Awesome. Um, might as well <laughs> go first. And <laughs> it's uh, much of a muchness. Thanks, really. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay um so i very hastily put together a little bit of a presentation um after we had a chat with paul paul emailed us a couple of weeks ago and said oh we've seen that you've been doing some cool things with teams um and and canvas and would you like to share that with the group because there's been some interest and we sort of said yes um and i suppose i'll prefix my <laughs> presentation with the fact that for us at Trinity, um, we're a Anglican independent boys school. Um, we've got quite a few students. So we're on the over 2000 mark, but our use of Canvas, um, that's been something we've had for quite some time. And it's obviously just ramped up a lot over the last few years, particularly with COVID and learning management systems being something that, um, have been in high demand. Um, but our use of Teams in conjunction with Canvas or Teams at all has been quite limited until more recently. So over the last few years, we have had a little bit of a trial or beta program running uh, to have Canvas and Teams work together. And that's had a few different iterations or stages um, over time. And the things that I wanted to just talk about today were how we've decided to go ahead and integrate Canvas and Teams um, and some of the benefits that we see, some of the possible problems that we see, um, and some of our reasoning behind using the two, tool, the two tools um, together. So I'll just work out <laughs> where my share screen button is um, and then get going. Here we go. So let's pop that up nicely so that looks good. Awesome. Um, so essentially when we are looking at uh, Canvas and Microsoft Teams together, we actually only really wanted the class notebook aspect. So bear that in mind as we run through the slides <laughs> and we, we really didn't care so much at the start at least for um, Microsoft Teams as, a, as such, but just the class notebook aspect really intrigued us um, from a teaching and learning point of view. So previously in Canvas, um, there was a class, or maybe there still is, I'm not sure, a class notebook integration directly um, rather than um, what we've currently got or a new option that we've got, which is a Teams integration. So um, all along, we've had a few little iterations of how things worked. We tried out that class notebook integration and it was just to create a class notebook within a Canvas course uh, or class area. 
And one thing that we found was that class notebook um, created by the Canvas integration was owned by the teacher in the teacher's OneDrive space. So that was okay. Um, and we worked with that for quite some time, a couple of years, maybe a year or so, um, as we trialed things out. Then we realized that when the teacher leaves, it was a bit of an administrative hassle to try and um, change ownership of the class notebook from a teacher's OneDrive. So what we really wanted was the ability to have a OneNote class notebook uh, within Canvas, linked from within Canvas, uh, that's owned and easily managed by the school, uh, rather than in a teacher's sort of personal OneDrive space. And we definitely didn't want to replace our learning management system Canvas. So I know that there's been some discussion in the education sector about um, is Teams a reasonable learning management system? Um, what benefits does it offer or whatnot? And we decided that we uh, saw the value in the Canvas tool um, alongside the class notebook aspect within Teams. So why and what functions do we have and what are we using in both spaces? So within Canvas, that's most definitely our learning management system. We've used that for uh, the curation of our lessons, for uh, providing information to our students with regard to syllabus, documents. Um, we've created a lot of content in that Canvas space that is essentially building up to be a little bit of a textbook of our own. Um, we also add in our casual teachers into our Canvas spaces, and that's where we put our lesson direction um, for the casual teachers. So really that's the starting point or the hub for our students and staff when they start a lesson or when they're um, collecting or putting resources together um, to share. We've also obviously got announcements. And one thing that's key to mention as well is that marks and assignments most definitely live um, within the Canvas space. So I know that Teams has the ability and also the OneNotes uh, class notebook space has the ability to work with assignments and marks and all of that, um, but we don't use that functionality within the team space. It's purely in the Canvas side. So what does class notebook actually give to us? It's really a way to, capture the class. So um, it's capturing the goings on, the discussions, the whiteboard work, all of that. Um, also, sometimes it's about easily annotating resources. So if you've got a slide deck, for example, and you wanted to be able to annotate on that and then capture it within the classroom space and then have it available for the students after the fact, um, we found that to be quite useful. Now, obviously, part of our uh, rolling out process had to start with the devices that we had in school. So our teachers, um, for the majority, uh, have two-in-one devices, so a device that has a pen. And that really brings out the uh, OneNote class notebook capabilities. Um, and then that's where we're capturing that digital whiteboard. So my demo is a little bit technical in the way that it's set up, um, less pretty pictures and more how did we do it and what were the issues or considerations that we found. With regard to set up, um, there are a couple of different ways that you can set up, uh, I suppose, a team space or a class notebook space. And in our case, we've decided to use the inbuilt to Canvas or fairly new as well, Teams integration. So there's an integration available within team, within Canvas, sorry, that will create a team space for your classes. So we start off with Canvas, then the Canvas is what prompts the teams to be created for each class. So we're using that Canvas Teams integration. I'll show you some screenshots of how to set that up in a second. Um, and then we actually go through and manually create the class notebook. So Canvas doesn't then um, allow you to say, yes, I'd like a class notebook. Yes, I'd like something else. So that integration itself that I believe is created by Microsoft um, doesn't have a whole lot of options. It's like, do you want a team or not? Yes, no. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's actually a really good point, Rachel. Uh, so just to clarify, the new Teams integration was actually written and is fully supported by Microsoft, uh, not not in Structure. Um, so uh, yeah, they they have complete control over how that currently works. And just while I have you, I've um, there's a question from Belinda in the chat. Um, just before we move on too far, what do your students have at Trinity? The same as teachers, i.e., touch screen with a pen. Good question, actually. I wish. Um, our school is BYAD, so the students could have literally anything. Well, not quite. We have some rules around what they could have. Um, and essentially, that is you either have a Mac or a PC. Uh, and we do provide some guidance around those specs. But we're currently not mandating any kind of digital inking device. So some of the students love it and they will bring their own digital inking devices or they'll choose digital inking devices. We find that more in the senior years um, and they tend to use the OneNote space a lot more um, and also for their own notes. But we have a range of devices from the student perspective there. And I don't think that will change anytime soon. So we can manage what the teachers have um, and we can manage how we roll that out. But in our case, particularly with the BYD aspect, um, I think at this point in time, and probably for the next few years, we'll probably stay with our current model of not being too specific about the thing that they must have and not requiring the digital inking. So yeah, obviously you can sort of see where that leads us. It's more of a teacher showing rather than students also all jumping in and working together so much with the annotation side of things. So with regard to our setup um, of that Teams integration, um, like I said, there's no ability to say that a class notebook will automatically be created. That is all managed by um, essentially the teacher, though we decided not to make our teachers do that extra piece of work and um, that piece of work falls to me to go through and make sure that we create the class notebooks for each class um, and one of the key things or the bits and pieces that we wanted to make sure is again canvas being our learning management system being our starting point um, being the one place that we want our people to go we don't require them to actually access the team itself we want them to have the OneNote class notebook and we want them to have Canvas. And Teams for us is a place where that OneNote lives, um, where it resides, where the school has management of or easy management of the class notebook. So again, our situation's a little bit um, all over the place because of that. So we're not actually using the Teams functionality. We just want the class notebook and we want Canvas. So in order to facilitate that, we actually use the redirect tool in Canvas to create a link to the class notebook. So that will be on our menu system, um, our class menu, where it just has a class notebook link. And for the most part, the way that the students interact with that, students and teachers both, is that they jump into Canvas, they can click on that class notebook link and opens up in a new tab is the option we've selected. Um, and then they can access the class notebook either in the browser or um, open it up in the app. Now, we've noticed that once students start to open up the class notebook in the app, the class, um, the OneNote app, they don't often come back to Canvas to click that link. So they're actually just opening it up natively in the app there. And it makes a lot of sense from them. Again, they would, unless they're really searching for it, they wouldn't actually click through the team space. So one of the key things that made us decide to use the Teams integration uh, more recently is that it manages the teacher and student enrollments based on the Canvas enrollments. And that was important to us because um, I mentioned before that we'd use the class notebook integration and that had a problem where the class notebook was stored in the teacher's uh, OneDrive space. We didn't like that. Then we moved over to use um, SDS, which is um, School Data Sync provided by Microsoft, which allows you to then create teams and whatnot. And I think Paul will talk about that in a little bit more detail um, a little bit later. But we decided that that wasn't appropriate for us either. Um, and we we're sort of at this little crux of deciding how to proceed with um, our processes. 
and this Canvas Teams integration popped up as a new feature. And we said, yep, this looks good. It does what we need. Now, when I have the word manual here um, in quote there, so again, that setup, I'm automating using a tool. And this is a, a browser extension tool that is able to sort of um, press buttons for you, essentially. So this could be automated in a better way. I'm um, just showing you the option that I'm currently using, um, realizing that we're not doing this across the whole school. So it's not a huge <laughs> process for us at this point in time, um, but it is a little bit of a dodgy way there. So I wouldn't be putting that Selenium ID option as your um, final if you're looking to uh, build a project uh, like we have here. So again, beta in that sense. All right, so just some more technical steps on enabling the Teams integration with Canvas and then some considerations. So you must enable it on the root account level in Canvas there, and you'll need to probably work in IT or ask IT people uh, tenant names and some of the options there. Um, there's no ability to enable Teams Sync option on a sub-account level. However, you do have to enable or choose to have, um, or you can choose to have within each course. So you would potentially go into each course then and say, yes, for this course, I'd like a team. Yes, for that course, I would like a team. So it doesn't have to be a team created for every single Canvas course that you have in your uh, tenant, in your account there. So that's quite nifty. There are some considerations or some learnings that I wanted to share with you as well, uh, based on uh, our exploration. And that is number one, the Microsoft team name that comes up is based on the Canvas course name. So this field here under settings in each course. And we used to have ours without the year, but because that would then become confusing uh, after a few years within the team space, we've added the year into our course name space there as well. Um, also, the link for the SharePoint site that is created, so uh, just a little bit of a background there, um, a team has a SharePoint site behind it, so you've got SharePoint running the Microsoft team, which then hosts the OneNote, in our case, the things that we care about. Um, that SharePoint site link is randomly generated, so it will always have a unique ID there. So it starts off with this naming convention. You've got course, then our class code that comes through. Um, again, that comes from um, the space here and then a random ID there. And that I haven't found a way to change and I don't think that there is a way to change there. Um, just as well, uh, you can manually sync the enrollments contained within a Canvas course um, within the integrations tab in settings. So we've mentioned before that the enrollments within Teams come directly from within the Canvas course area. So students and teachers within uh, the Canvas course will automatically also be added into our team space. Now, if you, oh, that seems to run at a sort of a periodical level um, as a new, enrollment is added into Canvas, it should kick it off. Sometimes you need to manually kick that off and um, that can only be kicked off every 90 minutes in every course um, space as well. So just a note when you're testing or when <laughs> you're adding people in, you'd add multiple people in and then go through and sync that. I've also noticed sometimes that permissions um, as in access permissions can be a little tricky. So sometimes it seems to get a little funk and that often happens when, um, and I think that's user error more than anything else. So if a student wants access to a particular resource in a uh, team, so let's say a student's asking for access to a, a OneNote class notebook because uh, they were recently added to the course, but the sync process hasn't kicked off properly yet and they're impatient and they really want access to that OneNote space immediately, um, then sometimes what happens is they request permission because they've got that access denied um, message come up. 
the teacher goes through and says, yeah, have access, no worries. And then I think that the team sync gets a little bit <laughs> mucked up and says, you've got permissions to share to this particular aspect, but you don't have access to everything. I'm not quite sure, sure what to do. Um, and the manual fix is to then go into the SharePoint team site and then actually remove the permissions and then allow the process to re-add them is what I've found. So Rachel, speaking of permissions, uh, mm. Sam in the chat, uh, Samuel says, if you have more than one teacher in a course, are they all owners in Teams slash OneNote? And then a second question was, what about other user roles like Observer? Yeah, okay. Um, that's a pretty good question, actually, because the answer is yes. <laughs> um, so you can have multiple teachers, they are all owners, and that's been quite useful for us. So um, and that is not just the base teacher role. So any of the teacher roles that uh, come off that. So if you've created your own teacher role and modified the permissions for that, because it was based on the Canvas default teacher. So we have teacher additional as well. Um, and both of those roles, so if you're any teacher level role, they are then added in to the team and then obviously access to OneNote as a teacher. That's particularly useful for us, um, seeing as we add in our casual teachers on a daily basis. So the casual teacher also has access to what's going on in the OneNote space um, in, our, in our instance. Um, with observers, they're added in seemingly, so we don't actually have so many observers in our space. Um, we have observers in the junior school and the prep school, but we're not using the Teams integration in those spaces. We're only using it in the senior school area. Um, but we do have our learning support teachers added in as observers in the senior school area. So a bit of context. But um, the observers look like they're added in as students. So they'd have view access um, and they also get the their own little space within the OneNote area, if you're looking at the um, class notebook area. So they get their own little folder there. Um, but so from my understanding, and again, it's not 100% tested, just visually noticed, is that the observers are added in uh, like a student would be. So view access to a lot of spaces there. Um, actually, yeah, that's all I had to say or share at this point in time. Um, again, a very technical view into how this is set up and some of the issues that we've encountered along the way, um, bearing in mind also that we currently only have this in a couple of different faculties and they are mathematics and economics primarily. And they find that to be very, very useful from the annotation side of things within our OneNote space. Um, but we are considering rolling it out uh, further afield in future. So we shape up our processes a bit and um, learn from what we've experienced so far. Perfect. Very, right. yeah. Sorry, very I'm, well. I'm very happy to answer any questions, <laughs> particularly around how things are set up and um, yeah, what has worked and what has not worked. Well, there's, um, uh, there's one more question from Samuel, but what we might do is we'll flip over to Paul and let him share what they're doing. And then we might circle back to that, Samuel, if that's all right. Um, because I think that's going to be appropriate for both to answer. Um, for sure. Get there. Um, so Paul, far away. Thank you. Um, look, I apologize first up if I'm a little distracted. Um, somehow or other today, I've got the job of processing and running our academic reports for the junior school and uploading Oh, your audio just dropped out, Paul. Nope, nope, no audio. All right, let's try that. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, much better, thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was in the middle of complaining. That's right. So yeah, I've got the job of running, uh, you know, processing a junior school reports. 
to our wonderful sis. And I have been out since eight o'clock this morning. I get through three classes and it crashes. And now I'm up to my last two classes in year six and I get one class and it crashes. So <laughs> I'm on to another last class now. So if it crashes again, I may look the other way. Oh dear, don't you love it? Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to what we're talking about. I'm just gonna try and share my screen now. Uh, don't you love it? <laughs> awesome time of year. It is, eh? <laughs> yeah, we'll put this bit. Um, sharing options, share screen. Uh, let me try and pull the right one up for you. Hopefully you will be seeing a, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, not yet. Nope. Nope. Good luck it will. No, nope, there you go. There we go. Oh, right, okay. Everything's good. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel, for going first. You, you saved my bacon there while I was doing that. So um, look, uh, lots of similar stuff. And I, I know you guys are doing wonderful things down at Trinity too. So look, we um similar, but we, we do have approached it slightly differently. And I think... Um, and the key thing you pick up from both of us is just getting the balance right between the three programs and how they work. Um, we've been a Canvas school since oh, 2017, I think, Paul. We went live 2018. Sounds about and, right. You know, now we're um, kindergarten to 12 using Canvas in, in various ways. Um, we are an independent school in the north of Sydney, and we have just finished this year going to full co-ed. Uh, from pre-K through to 12, we've got uh, 2,900 students. So we've grown significantly in the, the last little while. Um, background on the type of equipment we've got, um, every student in pre-K to six is supplied with an iPad. Um, two to six, we also supply them an external uh, keyboard and they've all got a digital crayon. Um, I use a, a mix of uh, the Logitech crayon and the Zag pens I've moved to now. Uh, can't afford Apple ones, too expensive. Um, seven to nine, we are a uh, Microsoft Surface school. Um, and again, that's school supplied and it, um, they get the, the digital pen with that as well. We're currently BYOD in 10 to 12, um, but looking at changing that, it's up for review at the moment. And the reason I say that is that um, Digital Inc is one of our frameworks. So just to give you a bit of background where we've approached this whole thing from with the three applications is, one of our main pedagogical frameworks was blended learning and we bought that in probably four years ago you know in fact of having those courses available online for that interaction to you know mix up what you do face to face and, and support in the classroom so that's been a big thing that drives a lot of the things we do um, and we bought in canvas really um, and that was the basis of our blended learning of getting our courses up and written uh, we mandated in our high school by the end of 2018 2019 that all courses had to have a uh, an instant, I mean, a um, some sort of representation in Canvas. And since that time, we've spent a lot of time working on uh, the quality and the content that goes up there. And I think we're sort of getting quite close now. Um, in the high school, we um, get someone in each faculty to volunteer to be an instructor and designer. And we work, our digital learning team, um, Stephen and Andy and I work quite closely with them to develop the course content. And that works quite nice. And we, we will... Um, give them time to do that, cover them for a day and get them in there and really help them build those courses. Um, just before lockdown, we also made the decision to move from blueprint courses to cohort as well. So we now cohort based courses right across um, from certainly three to 12. So all students are uploaded from our timetable into Canvas and, and each Canvas courses in, has the classes or sections split up underneath and it really forced um, collaboration across our school and boy did we have to drag some people kicking and screaming into that as well I think it's been one of the best things we managed to do out of this is you know get faculties um, to collaborate together on getting that shared content up there into canvas and it's worked really well for that um, well just before, we did, you, uh, just before you go on um, there is a quick question I thought it'd be a quick easy one to answer can you please repeat the stylus you have in k6 the one that you actually like Oh, yeah, okay. Um, look, I started off with the Logitech Crown. Um, they were considerably probably a half the price of the Apple Pencil, but I got, had a really high failure rate with them. Um, in fact, we sent 200 of them back to the Logitech in the US and said, look, they just stopped working. Um, they did kindly replace them for us, but with them we found the Zag Pen, 
um, which we are buying for around about ninety dollars each, so much cheaper. So and Z you don't have to sync them. Z A G G. No syncing, no Bluetooth. You turn them on and they work. They're really, really good. The only only uh, drawback with them is their USB C charge. So when you've got iPads that are lightning, mm, it has a little complication for charging, but we've worked our way around that. But yeah, I really like them. They're, they're, they're nice pens, really good for pencil grip for the little ones and, and work quite well. We do I get to? Okay, yeah, so we, we sort of found that, you know, we love Canvas and everything about it. Sorry, Paul, but we did find there was something a bit missing with it and it was getting that, that quick content up there. Um, you know, we could develop really nice courses and we certainly utilize assessment, which I'll talk more about. We, we utilize quizzes and discussions um, significantly, but it was that day-to-day -day classwork. And this is where we started to look at, you know, the next tool that, here we go, let me get this up. Oh, Stephen put this PowerPoint together. He made his logo come up last. I'll have words with him later. Um, so we looked at OneNote, okay, and, and had that integrated in there. So Canvas is really operating as a digital textbook. So as I said, the share collaborated space is up there, but then the day-to-day -day work, um, work tool, the workbook became OneNote. And very, very similar to what Rachel was saying, yeah, it's fantastic for getting in there, uploading worksheets, distributing through the class notebook, being able to go and view them, annotate on them. Um, slowly training my teachers now. I work mainly in the junior school and, and I've got some um, teachers down here that are amazing. They, they've really taken to this so well. Um, we've got wireless connectivity through to all our data projectors and smart whiteboards in the classroom. So they'll hook in in the junior school via Apple TV. They're walking around the classroom with the OneNote on it. They're annotating on the OneNote as they're going. The kids are watching that. Surprisingly enough, when you walk around the classroom, you can see what the students are doing on their devices. I know that's radical, but hey, um, it was very successful. And they're doing that. And then the kids are collaborating at the same time and they're watching real time what's happening on the screen. And I think as Rachel said as well, end of the lesson, that work is saved. You know, we've spent years putting wonderful stuff up on a whiteboard and wiping it off at the end of the day. Or, you know, we got these devices and it's great. Okay, take a picture of the whiteboard. Mm, isn't this fantastic? So OneNote is, is just fantastic with that. Um, and it works incredibly well as we go through our processes. Um, um, in terms of that that digital workbook. So that was a, a next step. But then the next one we looked at was Teams as well. So we had, um, you know, the whole network share thing going on back in the old days. And, and I'm embarrassed to say that school names Barker and all our servers were dog names. And we had Snoopy was our network share. Um, that was wonderful. So of course, everything was dumped up there. And, and after 10, 15 years, nobody could find anything in it. So we officially put Snoopy down and I was involved in that. It was wonderful. And we moved across to Teams. So Teams has become our, our network storage area is at, a, at its most base level. So all our documentation is up there. We create Teams for faculties. Um, as I say, we've got a junior school team. So, you know, all our documentation policies and all that sort of thing is up in Teams now. So no more network shares is accessible from everywhere. Um, so we've got the three tools working together, which is really nice. And we started to look at how we were going to combine them. And we did look at um, integrating it into Canvas. Uh, that was back in the early days. Um, and it broke. And I think from there, I know Microsoft have done a lot of wonderful work in integrating them together. But um, the same time that we had that broke on us, we hit COVID. And so we went into lockdown. And it was a mad scramble to, to work out the best way we get things working. So we went down the path of school data sync um, for populating uh, teams in OneNote. So similar to what Rachel was saying, um, from our timetable, we will create a class team. So every teacher has their own class team that automatically generates the class notebook. The students are pre-populated in there. The teachers are populated in there from the school data sync, which comes out of EdVal, a timetable program. Uh, really, really easy for teachers to go in and add someone else to the team, like a learning support teacher um, or, you know, a, a team teacher or anything like that. In our, um, and again, from the junior school perspective down here, in the grades, they're all, all teachers in each other's notebooks for sharing content. Um, and we run school data sync uh, nightly or whenever there's a change, we can force a manual one as well. So we got the two things happening, our own script that we wrote um, to sync from Edvel to Canvas and the school data sync. So whenever we have a new student come in, we run both of those scripts and, 
uh, populated straight away. Um, it takes a lot of that manual management out of it, which we were doing in the early days as well, um, uploading CSV files. I've come to love the CSV file. Um, so it's super easy now and it's, dare I say, it, getting pretty much bu bulletproof these days as well. So we make a change, run the sync and then it populates the new students in the team, they get the one note and they just start working from there. So um, at the end of each year, in terms of the team's classroom and OneNote, those are archived. Um, in our junior school, inside their administrative team, we also have a OneNote blueprint in there. So that stays from year to year and we get them to build up worksheets and units of work that they're using OneNote in that. And then at the start of the year, when the sync runs, the new class notebook is created. It's just a copy across and that's been really effective. Uh, in terms of Canvas, again, the, the beauty of using the cohort course now is that we develop all this wonderful content in there. Um, we create next year's courses and then roll over what we want from the existing course into that. And we found it to work really, really effectively for us. I've forgotten about my PowerPoint, so, sorry. Uh, that's all right. Well, whilst you're on that subject, Peggy asked uh, on the cohort courses, do you have a single learning path for all teachers and students? Yeah, look, we pretty much do. Um, and we were, um, and that was a, a definite decision that we did that. And again, it forced that collaboration. And, and so that we're getting some really rich resources up there that the teachers are using across the board. But we don't want to stop them diversifying off into their own particular way of doing things. And they do that a little bit more up in the high school than they do in the junior school. So that's where OneNote comes in. So again, the shared content that uh, for the course is all up in Canvas. And then they're starting to do other things that they want to do in OneNote. Of course, they've got the ability in Canvas to, you know, push out assessments or discussions or quizzes to their own class too. So they do tend to do it in there. But that that digital textbook idea in, the, um, in Canvas just works really, really well for us. I so, like yeah. this. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is good. Animations, yeah, animations. From, from this Steve. This will make Stephen yeah. feel better. Yeah. I'm just going to do it so you can see it. So yeah. I've pretty much said all this anyway. So yeah, it's doing exactly that. Yeah. So in in one note, they can break down that content and, and teach it with their own style and their own way. But again, sharing it across um, different teachers within their faculties too. Um, the other key thing that we use Canvas for is our Markbook. I think similar to what Rachel said as well. Um, all of our assessment is done in there. In the high school, we sync um, the marks from uh, the grade book across to our uh, SIS. And we're having about as much fun with that as our SIS as I'm having with our reports currently. Um, I know I won't say it's very unprofessionally. Don't ever get engaged. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway, so our marks are going into Canvas. We're doing it all. The only thing in the high school, they do do a bit of manipulation of the marks. So they struggled to do that in Canvas. That's really why we've got to take it across to our SIS. Um, in the junior school, um, yeah, look, I've certainly got our teachers doing the majority of their um, probably uh, definitely summative, some form of assessment in Canvas. We've also gone down the path of um, uh, progressive reporting as well. Um, sorry, there's the Teams thing. Um, progressive reporting um, is the barkerization of um, continuous reporting. We have to rename everything for some reason, but we do anyway. So basically that's, we're doing um, checkpoints throughout the semester and our parents are invited to go and look at that. So it's real time feedback to the learners at the point of their learning, uh, which we think is just wonderful. So they're getting a, um, all the responses we're doing, we're, we're using speed grader and rubrics particularly, um, and the parents can get in and see that in Canvas to get that feedback. And at the end of the semester, we're basically just producing a transcript now, which gives a grade. Uh, this is a, first full year of it and it's um, working really successfully so far. So Canvas has come into its own there in terms of uh, the marking and, and actually having the parents in um, and seeing um, the results of, of their kids. And I think, you know, it's so nice that we can direct that feedback to the students. The students have got the opportunity to get in there and discuss the feedback inside SpeedGrader, um, which again is a, a wonderful thing. So the teachers are setting time aside for reflection after they've done a task. and. I think that's the big step that we caught off and gloss over as well. Um, and that's working really effectively. So that's our, what we call our digital toolkit. Um, in the junior school, the only other thing that's different there is that in uh, our prep, uh, prep school from pre-K to two, we also, we use Seesaw. 
um, just really for the ease of use for the younger students to be able to upload work. Um, we've got all our parents in that as well. So they um, can get in and comment and do the smiley faces and all that lovely thing, things on the, the, the kids' work. And it's really just nice for that. It's a digital portfolio that works really effectively. Look, they have tied um, a little bit of assessment into it. And I know they've got those things in there and it does work reasonably well. But in terms of that progressive reporting, we need to have our checkpoint stuff in Canvas. So this year I've pushed Canvas down, uh, right down to kindergarten. So the teachers are doing that progressive reporting assessment inside Canvas. Um, so the combination of all four of those in the junior school works really, really well for us. So um, yeah, in a nutshell, that's kind of what we do. And I think, again, where we differ is that the school data sync is doing uh, the teams on OneNote set up. Um, so we don't have direct collaboration out of uh, sorry, direct links out of it from Canvas. Um, we have written our own little buttons in the rich content er um, editor that pops in a button that says open in OneNote or go to OneNote now for the worksheet. So we can't hyperlink directly to it in a OneNote, which is a bit annoying. Um, we've tried various ways going through SharePoint and everything else, and we just can't get those links to work. So now there's a clear button that we use across year three to year 12 so the kids recognize it. I do have one issue with it though, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. What color is OneNote? Purple? Yeah. So Stephen Lizio, my colleague, wrote the button. He's made it red. I've got a problem with him because it should be purple because everybody recognizes a purple button and it's going to purple OneNote. So I'll remind him that you're all nodding to that one. So, uh, But look, you know, that, that works quite, quite well for us. Maybe one day we'll be able to hyperlink to it. So, uh, but we are getting there. Um, and look, in terms of the toolkit, collectively, all three and including Cecil, all four of those work uh, working really well for us at the moment. So we're um, super pleased with where we're going with it. And I think the only other thing I'll have to say, and it's terribly inappropriate, but um, lockdown was extremely good for us. Um, we had this toolkit in place. Um, and teachers made that transition to it. And it, it's really progressed what we want um, our staff to do in terms of this digital toolkit incredibly. Yeah, now that we're back and we're starting to see people fall off. So we've got lots of propaganda going on at the moment saying, you know, keep it up because having the three work together with face-to-face -to -face teaching has, has really, I think, um, improved our teaching and learning here at Barker. Um, so a couple of questions. Thanks for that, Paul. Um, mm -hmm. So Ben, a little bit earlier, <laughs> uh, just before you got started, actually, um, uh, Rachel answered for Trinity, but you know, would you say your mathematics teachers have their content sitting in OneNote or Canvas? Um, yeah, probably OneNote. I would say more. Um, there's definitely content up there in Canvas. Um, you know, from your Kuma videos to to all that sort of stuff is there. Um, and you know the shape and the uh, courses in Canvas, but uh, one thing we did have to do for them, they were very, very keen on getting past HSC papers somewhere, and we tried all sorts of things until we got Teams going, and now Teams has been the most effective place for us to go and dump all those past papers and make it accessible for the kids. That one we can hyperlink to from Canvas, so we've given them a, a nice clear path through in, into those past papers. That was a big thing, thing for them. Um, okay. What else was there? Oh, Cassandra asks, if the cohort has six classes, can each class still have their own notebook in the cohort team? Yeah, look, we're, we're running big cohorts. Um, in our high school, we've got 16 um, streams in English and maths and seven to nine. Each one has its own uh, class team and its own class notebook um, is is produced inside that so yep every one of our classes has their own individual notebook oh uh, another one well can i just quickly speak to that yeah yeah go for it um <clears throat> just on that uh the difference in the way that each of us paul and i or trinity and barker have set up our uh teams integrations comes into play there so our setup in canvas is to have individual class Canvas courses. And that really allows us to then have a team space linked to that individual Canvas class course. And that enables us to easily use that Microsoft Teams integration available within Canvas. 
if you have the setup where you've got one cohort class in Canvas, you do well to use the SDS um, school data sync um, option yeah. that Barker are using because there's no way to spawn multiple teams from one Canvas course. Um, you'd have to then just mimic the process of enrolling people in a, in a team space using SDS and then possibly link back or whatever you choose to do there. Yeah, so it's that, important to note. Yeah, that's that's feedback that we've provided to Microsoft as well because that's quite a common thing that people would like if they're running section-based courses uh, rather than individual blueprint courses um, because it is a limitation of the way that they set it up currently. Um, but yeah, as you said, there, there is the SDS option, which is what Barker's using, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to have you both on because you know there's there's not one single way to to uh, to do it. Um, you can do it multiple different ways. Um, now I think you kind of answered this a little bit earlier, but uh, Samuel earlier asked you know, what happens to the team when the course is archived, so at the end of the academic year. Yeah, um, we do archive it. Um, it is available um, if people need it um, through um, SharePoint. Uh, they can get to it. But again, I think a little bit like Rachel, we don't actually have a whole lot of content in the, the actual team. There's content in the notebook, absolutely. But that's where I know in the junior school, we've, we've got the, the blueprint one set up. So the teachers are actually designing a lot of their work in that blueprint one note first, and then they'll copy it across to their class notebook, and that stays from year to year. Just out of interest as well, um, I've got all the guys here, they're all programming in OneNote as well. So that's a shared OneNote that comes out of a, a channel in Teams um, in terms of that class administration. So it's one um, programming note, um, notebook and they will collaborate on that. Um, all our learning support teachers are able to get into that OneNote as well and, and make the um, adjustments that they need for those students. And, and that's quite an effective way that we're using it as well. Cool. This has been awesome. Um, the chat's gone a little bit quiet just before we finish up. Are there any other questions that anyone has? There's a good one there about emails, staff emails as well. Um, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're really, we're really pushing that. Um, now I'd say to people now, if you want me to come and help you use something, get me on teams. I'll answer that much quicker than I will with emails. Um, we've cut down our email load significantly. Um, a lot of people still use it, but we're definitely encouraging it. Uh, we're also terribly fortunate to use Skype for business for our phone system. I'll momentarily pause here. That um, is at the end of life. I'm so used to your sarcasm, if I knew you would. <laughs> I can yeah, recognize no, it probably, straight away. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're moving across to Teams um, as our phone system as well soon. So all our internal communication, we really encourage people to use Teams. Now, and the emails are just dropping off enormously. It's, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah, Pegasus says they're trying to move that way as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have no comment. Um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, unless there's anything else, I think that this has been really, really helpful. Um, oh, here we go. One last, Ben just snuck in under the buzzer. Um, Rachel, if we have parents in Canvas as observers, I expect the teacher might see all of their students in class notebook and all of their parents. Yeah, I imagine so, um, perhaps the way that that's set up. So again, I haven't tested that, but given the way that I'm seeing um, observers in our senior school space pop up in as the extra folders in the class notebook space, then yes, I possibly would make that class notebook area a little busy. Yeah, um, which would make things a bit interesting, right? Um, yeah. You want to do some testing to see what access they actually do have. Um, before you dive into that from what I can tell they might have access to see things like the content library um, and the collaboration spaces but they'd also get their own little folder which not great yeah they can just, play around just it. on the um, SDS side we don't we've got appearances observers in canvas they've got limited mm. access and what they see that at the moment they can't see content and courses but we don't have them in Teams or OneNote. I believe they do have their ability themselves to be able to bring parents in. And that's something we're considering at the moment, but haven't moved down that path yet. Yep. So it's something to uh, to consider and test out. 
Um, okay. Thanks, Ben. That was a really good question. Uh, all right. On that note, uh, unless there are any other questions, feel free to jump in the chat really quickly. I'll give you about 10 seconds. Uh, but otherwise, thanks so much, Rachel and Paul. Uh, it's been really, really insightful. As I said earlier, there's not just one way to do it. And depending on how you've set up your courses in Canvas, uh, you, know, you can either do the SDS route or you can do the Teams integration route. There's lots of different ways to do things. So thank you. And uh, um, and thanks for everyone who's asked questions as well. They've been really good questions uh, to, to prompt the discussion here. But I'll uh, stop the recording and thank everyone and let you get back to your afternoon. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Rachel. Cheers. Thanks.